All I hear is talking, I don't sweat that If they don't trust me, yeah, I respect that If she need on the ride, oh, I bet that Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that Don't forget that, don't forget that Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that Don't forget that, don't forget that Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Jay. No, no, no. <clears throat> My name is something. How y'all doing, Postal family? Is everybody good? Is everybody cool? Everybody clean? Are you crisp? Are you feeling iry today? <laughs> Let's talk. And and no, this is not that other guy. Hey, dummy, why are you wearing that damn mask? Well, well. I was just diagnosed with the flu, flu B or something, and they told me I needed to wear a mask because I was highly contagious. Yeah, but you're by yourself, dummy. Yeah, I, I am by myself. I was, I am, but I was kind of wondering, like, when people were doing this with the coronavirus and you see people driving in a car, and they'd have their mask on and they were in the car by themselves. I was kind of wondering why they were doing that. It's like kind of like wearing a condom to bed and you don't even have a partner just for overprotection, just in case. I, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Anyway, let's get to the story. <clears throat> okay, enough of this. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Okay, that was some foolishness. All right, how y'all doing, Postal Family? This is JH. Surprise! <laughs> you, you guys were fooled. You thought it was somebody else, didn't you? Yeah, you did. You did. Listen, we're going to talk about uh, uh, why management is so bad. It's an opinion piece. It's an opinion piece. You guys going to love this. So why is management so bad? Opinions. And see how much you guys can uh, relate to this. And then uh, I'm going to throw a little swerve in at the end and see if you guys uh, can see where I throw the swerve in. But yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> Let's talk. Uh, local managers have very little power and a lot of angry people from up high. Hmm? I guess. I guess. Whatever that means. The individual says this is accurate. I'd also add that many of our EAS have little to no training at all. Some were hired originally as seasonal or temporary employees. Nothing wrong with that. But expecting those people to manage effectively dozens or hundreds of people is crazy. Being a good manager takes knowledge, patience, technical skills, good communication, etc. But we pretty much give a promotion to anyone that asks for one. It's a real shame all the way around. Bad for management, bad for craft. I, I get it. I get it. I get it. The next one. The next one. You guys agree? You guys agree? All right. It says, I understand this job has always had poor managers to the most extreme levels of incompetence. But since the letter carriers is having the spotlight forced upon us as the reason why postal service is hurting, I'd like to assert that nobody is fooled. Management to this day is why the postal service is failing why morale is so low, why staffing is so inadequate, and for most reason why hostile and unfavorable work conditions exist. 95% of management is lazy, illiterate, unintelligent, and spiteful. I guarantee you, if all the district positions and management positions were slashed, 75% of our problems would vanish overnight. The letter carrier and the clerk position and the mail handler position and the mechanics are the backbone of the USPS. Management is like a little shit stain trying to remain relevant in our day-to-day -day operations. And what they're trying to do to the letter carrier craft right now is such a joke. The same bastard that couldn't do our job of trying to tell us exactly how to do them. Wow, that was that was pretty rough. Would you guys agree with that? Mm, mm. It's a job. Management sucks. No one wants to work until 8 p.m. But the key to working here is not to take it that seriously. Treat it like a job. You have to go through in order to make money. 
Don't get embarrassed delivering late. Not your fault. They hire idiots to be supervisors here. Hmm. I believe you're right. I think management is a disgrace. I would feel ashamed of being one of them. I work hard, come back to the station and see management watching videos on their phone, shooting a shit with clerks, etc. They're just relaxing. When I interrupt by being present, they only pause to send me back out to do more work. You might think this is exaggeration. It isn't. My belief is that they very much enjoy feeling powerful and want to portray that as a way to torment us. Man, this is this is some rough stuff. So how do you guys feel about that? Do you oh God. Let the eyes adjust. How do you guys feel about that? Do you eyes ain't adjusted yet? Bear with me. You think it's uh truth? Because again, these are just opinion pieces here. Um well I, I I gotta be the devil's advocate here and this is where things are gonna get a little iffy. Uh, but it's, you know, like I always said before, I'm one of those that's not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you what I believe is the truth. All right. So let's go and re-dissect some of these things and see if we can. <laughs> oh, man. It states here, this is accurate. I'd also add that many of our EAS have little to no training at all. Mm. OK, little to no training at all. EAS standing for the supervisors. They have little to no training at all. So here's the thing. I know for a fact because I give training to carriers as well as mail handlers and people that get into accidents. And it's called refresher training. Um, they don't even like to show up. I'm talking about craft employees. And when they do show up, they have a very piss poor attitude. I'm talking about the craft employees and I'm very cool to deal with. I know that for a fact. And I try to make the, the, the teaching very light spirited, but they don't want to be there. That's kind of the mindset of our regular, normal, everyday craft employees. They don't want to go to train for anything. Once you're hired and once you become a uh, regular, you feel as if you're invincible. You could run over somebody and feel like, I don't need to go to training. You can get caught without your seatbelt on. I don't need to go for training. You can get in an accident. I don't need to go for training. That's the mindset of the common everyday postal worker, right? It's kind of what it is. And if you're forced into going, oh, God forbid, you'd hate to just go just to listen to me talk and read something out of a book, something that you probably already know, but that's part of it, right? Right. Cool. It says some were originally as seasonal or temporary employees. You're right. You're right. Seasonal or temporary employees. See, unlike the people that we hire today, the people that have been there for 15, 20 years came in as temporary employees. They actually had to scratch, crawl and grind their way up to their positions. They didn't get to walk in and get guaranteed a career position within two years. So, yeah, they had to go through the heartaches and headaches of being a non-career, a flexible, a on-call person that's always at call, at will. They had to go through those headaches, something that a lot of people that are watching me now, they haven't had to deal with. So, yeah, I agree with that. Nothing wrong with that, but expecting those people to manage effectively dozens or hundreds of people is crazy. That is crazy that the post office doesn't hire managers from the outside to bring them on the inside to teach you how to do your job. I mean, I'd love to have somebody that was a manager at Kentucky Fried Chicken come in and tell me how to manage and be a truck driver, right? No, no. So you wouldn't want me as a truck driver. That's all I've done all my life to come to your station and teach you how to deliver mail, right? No. So what do they do? They hire from within. Makes sense? Yeah. Well, Jay, that doesn't even make sense because the people that they hire, the people that they move up to management, here goes the whopper, is you. To all the people that they're talking about right here, saying being a good manager takes knowledge, patience, technical skills, good, good communication, but we pretty much give promotion to anyone that asks for one. This one says, it says management is mostly made up of failed clerks and carriers who don't want to or can't perform their job task anymore. 
You're not promoting or hiring the best or brightest or hardworking or promoting for the wrong reasons. So here goes all my bright people, all my hardworking people. Are you going to step up and become management? I've said it before. Why don't you step into the management role? Be the change you want to see. No, you won't do it. You know why you won't do it? Because you love to complain. You don't like what's going on, but you like to complain about what's going on. So if you have the technical skills and you have the brightness that it requires, why don't you step up to become management? Oh, no, I don't want to be part of them. You don't want to be part of them, but you'd rather allow them to dictate your life. I don't really quite get it. Because it's your carrier that's sitting next to you that cased the mail with you for the last three, four, five years is the one that ends up getting promoted to the 204B and they go up to the supervisor position and go ahead and move up. That's who it is. It's not people from the outside. So when we sit here and we bash managers, it's basically the person that's working next to you that got promoted. So people that are mail handlers, one of those mail handlers is going to be a supervisor eventually, right? Somebody that's a processing clerk is going to be a manager one day. Somebody that's a truck driver is going to be a manager one day. So it's not like they just hired people from random. So the way they speak about management here is if they are just a whole different class or species of people. But in actuality, this class or species of people is us. And I've said this before. It's us. And if we want to continue to complain about us, why don't we change and step up? If you feel as if that you have what it takes to be better, then go for it. They post positions every single day. You go on e-careers and you look it up. Look it up. Apply. Put your mind to it. Yo, that's right. You don't want to take that time out to do it. You don't want the extra money, right? Oh, you don't want the extra headache. Why don't you want the extra headache? Tell me. Tell me. Tell Jay why you don't want the extra headache. No, let me tell you. Because when I stepped into management, I didn't want the extra headache because I didn't want to deal with a bunch of knuckleheads like myself. I did not want to deal with people like me. I know how to deal with people. I went to college for management. I know how to deal with people like me. I didn't want to stay in that zone because I didn't have the energy to deal with people like me. And who's people like me? My coworkers. So when you say, Mr. Carrier, that you don't want to step into management, it's not because you don't want that management money. Of course you want that money because that's all you, that's all you complain about. You want more money. It's because you don't want the headache. And what is involved with the headache? It's dealing with your fellow co-workers. That's what it is. So it takes a special person to step out of their comfort zone of being a carrier or a clerk or a mail handler to say, you know what, I'm going to go. Shit, I don't know much about this, but I'm going to try and get up in there and a hey, I'm not saying they're doing great because we know. <clears throat> but if you think you could do better, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Because I can look up any manager's name. You can look up any manager's name. You don't believe me? Go ahead. Open up your light blue. Go to your blue pages and go look for hero. Find your hero. Go ahead, look for your hero. Then when you go into your hero, punch in one of your manager's names up in the right corner. Find him. And look at what your manager used to do. I 100,000% assure you that your manager was a carrier, a rural carrier, a temporary, a handler, a this or that. You can look up anybody. And that's what they did. They were craft employees that moved up and stepped into the zone and they took on the responsibility. They took on the headache of dealing with knuckleheads like me and knuckleheads like you. Not you per se. Now, if it offends you, then it's you. But just imagine going into a station with 100 carriers. Good God almighty. You know how many attitudes are there? You know how many attitudes are there? How many different people come with each individual problem? And these people got to sit behind desks and deal with that? Now, I'm not saying they know how because they 
definitely need some training on how to deal with people. But that brings us back to when you were craft. Us as craft employees. Do you like to sit in training? Nope. They're forced into training. They are. I know for a fact I watch them sit across the hall from me and get training. Is it beneficial? I don't think so. I've listened to some of the stuff that they learn. But it's usually about figures and money. That's pretty much what it is. And how to deal with problem children. How to figure out if, you know, the people, how to get rid of people, basically. All the bad actors. Now, you may not want to hear that if you're a bad actor. You may love to hear that if you're a hard worker. How many disciplines does it take to move on to the next level? That's the type of stuff I hear them going through. Why is that so important? Because it bothers us every day. Because when people don't show up to work, we get bombarded with extra work. It's not the manager's fault that we got extra work. Oh, they just didn't schedule enough people. No, they scheduled quite, you know, enough. When has there ever been a day that everybody show up to work? I worked in the small transportation department. I don't think there was ever a day that everybody showed up to work. And I think we had like 35 drivers split into two shifts. Just imagine that. And there was never a time that everybody showed up to work. That's that's crazy. Just imagine when you got 100 carriers here or mail handlers there or clerks here. There's always short staff. Is that the manager's fault? Are we supposed to have backup? Then you got too many people. So I understand this job has always had poor managers to the most extreme levels of incompetence. I love this one. Poor managers. Where does these poor managers come from? It should say this job has always had poor co-workers to the most extreme levels of incompetence. So you go to work the next day and you look around your cases and just say it out loud. You are a poor person. You are incompetent. Just look around. I know you want to say it, but you can't. But that's what we're calling it right now. It just states that management is the is the reason to this day why postal service is failing. So if management is the reason that postal service is failing, who is management again? Us. Just with a different title. See, they stepped into a role and they're getting paid that money that y'all want to get paid. I know. I know. They getting that seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year, hundred plus thousand dollars a year, and y'all like they don't deserve it. I, you might be right. So go do it. If you think you deserve it, go do it. Go do it. I don't want to hear people in the comment section talking about, oh, Jay, you biased. No. If you want that money and you feel as if you're competent enough to manage or supervise or oversee a big operation then step up it doesn't sound too far-fetched because contrary to what you guys think there are plenty of people that reach out to me behind the scenes and ask me about helping them with their ksas and i have no issue helping with somebody that wants to step out of this zone to get up to here i have no issue with that because that shows me that they're thinking outside the box they're thinking about the pockets and seeing how they can have a positive impact from their perspective. Now, does that necessarily mean that their impact is going to be great? Don't think so. Will it be substantial? Mm, don't think so. Will it have some impact on their immediate people that they work with? I do think so. Because they're looking at it at a different perspective. They have people that they have to answer to. And those people have people that they have to answer to. So when somebody does step into management, understand that, yeah, a lot of them want to do the right thing, but there's a lot of ears and eyes involved in this. So their hands get tied quite a bit. Does that make an excuse for verbally abusive management or piss poor management that doesn't know how to actually manage itself? No, it doesn't make any excuse. But at the same time, if you think you can do better 
and you want more money, the opportunity is there. Everybody wants more money. The opportunity is there. You just don't want more headache. And truth be told, if you don't want the more headache, you know why you don't want that headache. And who is the headache? It's us. I'm the knucklehead. My co-workers are knuckleheads. Understand that. We have the opportunity to step up. Now it's your turn. Step up or stop complaining. This is JH. Please don't unsubscribe. Please don't. But I had to give it to you. I had to give it to you because I just kept reading it and reading it and reading it. All right. And uh, I got to go take some Tamiflu right now because I don't feel well. Y'all have yourself a good rest of your day. I'm out. Unexpected expenses stressing you out? Get the money you need now with Loans for Feds, a program designed specifically for federal employees. Bad credit is not a problem. Application is fast and easy with same-day approvals. Apply now.